In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create this smooth liquid background effect. It looks like a liquid that is moving on the background, but it's actually a bunch of blobs that are blurred and bouncing off the screen. So let's jump to code to learn how to implement that. So we are here in an empty project. Let's start by adding the needed HTML elements. So first, we're gonna add the blobs container. Let's just call it blobs. And inside of that, we're gonna have another container for the blob items. So let's call them blobs items. And inside of that, we're gonna add a blob element. So let's just give it the blob class. And we will specify the color of the blob using this class name. So let's start with a blue one. So let's go to style.css to add the styling code. So the container will work as a full width and height container that is fixed on the screen. So it will have a fixed position. And let's make it start from the top and left and a full width and a full height. Uh, let's make sure that it's always in the background by setting the Z index to minus one. Now let's style the blob itself. Let's start with a width of 400 pixels and the height of 400 pixels. Or actually, we can just use aspect ratio with one to make sure that the height is always as the width. And let's set its position to absolute. And let's make it start from the top left. And let's make it a circle. And we can do that by setting border radius to 50%. And now let's add the color. Uh, we will start with the blue one. So for the blue one, I'm going to use this color. Now, if we reload, we can see that the blob is displayed on the top left of the screen. Now, the next step is to make this blob moves and bounce off the screen edge. So let's go to the JavaScript file. Now, we will put our code in a function called init blobs. And let's call it here. First, I'm going to get all the blob elements. And we can do that by saying blob else document dot query selector all and it has the blob class. To make it easier to work on each blob individually, I'm gonna encapsulate each element in a class called blob. So let's define a class called blob, and it will take the element in the constructor. So let's define the constructor here. It will take the element, and let's assign it to a property called L. Now let's create the blob object for each blob element. We can do that by looping through them using the map function. But to do that, first we have to convert the blob elements to an array using array.from elements. And now for map, for each blob element, we're going to create a new blob object and pass the blob element. Now let's make sure that works by console log that element from the class. If I open up the dev tools, we should see it logged in here. And yeah, it works. Now the next step, we need to move this on the screen frame by frame. And we will use the transform CSS property for that. And to show you an example, if I select this element here, and I set the transform translate, and let's, for example, if I change it like this, it moves to the right. If I increase the Y1, it will move down. So my goal here is to update this property frame by frame. So we need a way to call a code on frame by frame. And we can do that using request frame animation. So this function takes a callback that runs before the next frame repaint. So we can prepare all the work for the next frame to render. So instead of passing a callback here, I'm gonna call a function called update. And let's define it here. If I say update, and I'm gonna console log the word tick. Now if I reload, I go to the console, you can see now it just logs the word tick, but it only does it once. We should do that on every frame. To do that, we have to call the update function again, but also using the same request animation frame to make sure it's called properly. If I do that again, you can see now it keeps executing that code on every frame. But now instead of logging the word tick, we need to change the transform property of the circle. We will split that code into two parts. The first one will be called update, and we need to define that on the blob class, and the second one will call it move. In the update method, we will update the values that represent the position and velocity of the blob. But in the move method, we will actually move that blob by updating the CSS property. So let's start with the move. In the move, we will say this.l style.transform and we will update the translate. So let's say translate 
and this will take the x axis one so let's just give it x and it will be in pixels and this one is for the y so now we need to define these properties so let's define them here x will start with 0 and y will start with 0 because they are starting from the top left of the screen we also need another two properties one for the velocity in the x-axis and one for the velocity in the y-axis so let's call it vx for the velocity in the x-axis and let's actually say it just one so it will move one pixel on every frame and let's do the same for the y-axis and let's remove this log now in the update method we will update the x position using the velocity of the x-axis so we will add the current x with the velocity x which means that on every frame it will increment by one and let's do the same for the y-axis and let's now reload and see what we will have now if you reload it will not move because we are still not calling the update and the move method and let's do that here so we will loop over all the blob objects and call the update and move methods on them so first let's assign this array to a variable called blobs and here let's first loop over all the blob objects by saying blobs dot for each and for each blob object we will call blob.update and then blob.move now if we reload we should see the blob is moving one pixel in the x-axis and one pixel in the y-axis and that results in moving diagonally like this but now when it hits the edge of the screen we should bounce it off so instead of just going away to do that we have to check if the blob hits the edge of the screen and we can do that check in the update method so after we increment the x and y positions, we can do the checks here. First, let's check if the right edge of the circle hits the right edge of the screen. And we can do that by checking if the x position is bigger or equals the window inner width. But we also need to account for the width of the circle, which means we should subtract the width of the circle. So the width of the circle in this case is 400 or we can get that dynamically by reading the element properties. So let's add it to a property called size, and we can say l.getBoundingClientRect, and let's get the width. In this case, the width and the height is the same, so size would represent both. So let's replace this with the size. Now, if the circle hits the edge of the screen, we have to reverse the velocity in the x-axis. And we can do that by multiplying the velocity in the x-axis by negative 1. And let's also make sure that it never goes past the screen edge. And we can set the x-axis to the window.inner width minus the size, which is the same as this one. So we, so we reverse the velocity in the x-axis and we make sure that the x position never goes past the screen edge. Now let's do the same thing but for the y axis. So first we will check if the y position is more than the window.inner height minus the size, the same as the previous one. And also we need to reverse the velocity in the y axis by doing so and forcing the y position to be always like this when it hits the bottom of the screen. In these two checks, we are checking the right edge of the screen and the bottom edge of the screen. Let's also check the left edge of the screen and the top edge of the screen. For these cases, it's simple because we can just say if the x-axis is less than or equal 0, we can reverse the velocity in x-axis and make sure that the x-position is always 0 in this case. And let's do the same thing for the y-position if it's less than 0. Let's reverse the velocity in y-axis and let's make sure that the y position is not less than zero. Now let's reload and see what we'll have. Actually, let's make this faster by making it move more than one pixel. Let's make it four pixels and four pixels also here. Cool, so it bounces off the right, the bottom, the left, and let's see if it bounces off the top edge. Yeah, that works. Now let's add more blobs to see how this would look like. If we go to the HTML file and let's duplicate this, let's make two blues and two purples. So let's say purple and this also purple. And let's add one with white. 
Now we need to define the purple color. So let's go to style.css and define the purple color. And I will use this one. Now it looks like we only have one blob and that's because all the blobs start at the same position and they move with the same velocity. To fix that, we have to randomize each value for each blob. Let's go to the JavaScript code and do this. First, I'm gonna create a helper function for generating a random value. So let's call it function just random. It will take a minimum value and a maximum value, and then it will return math.random times max minus min plus min. Now, whatever value I give to the min and the max, it will always return a value between min and max. So for the x-axis, it will start from the zero, like the left of the screen, and to the right of the screen, which would be the width of the screen minus the size of the blob. So let's create random, and uh, it will be from zero, the minimal value and the maximum value would be width minus size and for the y-axis it will be the same except that it will be for the height of the screen so it will be here inner height let's reload cool so now you can see each one starts from a different position but we need also to make sure that each one has a different velocity which means like each one runs with a different speed so let's use the random function and the minimum speed for each one would be two and the maximum speed will be 2.5. Let's do the same for the velocity and the y-axis to 2.5. If we reload, you can see each one moves with a different speed. But note that this value will always return a positive value, which means that they always will start moving to the right and to the bottom. So let's also make the direction random. And we can do that by either making it positive or a negative value. So let's do that by saying, let's multiply that with either one or minus one. And let's say if the random value is bigger than 0.5, then let's just use a negative value. Otherwise it will be positive. Let's do the same thing for the Y velocity and let's save. If you reload, you can see that some of them are moving down, but the others are moving up. So, okay, that works. Now our last step is to make these blobs blurry. And we can do that by going to the HTML file and adding another layer called blobs and let's call it glass for example let's go to the styling and if we go here and say blobs actually let's define this top here let's say blobs glass i will make this full screen but with a blur effect anything below it so let's say position so actually let's just copy this and let's use the backdrop filter and let's say blur is, for example, 120 pixels. And uh, let's do the one for the WebKit so it works on Safari. To make it work, we need to change the Z index for the glass layer, which is the layer on top of the blobs, and the Z index for the layer which the blobs are in. And let's, for example, do this Z index. Let's make it two. And for blobs, items, it will be Z index. Let's make it one. So you can see now it works and they are blurry. But let's improve this by increasing the size of each blob so it looks better. So let's change the width of the blob to 800 instead of 400. Now we can improve this even further by making sure that the white blob is always on top of the other blobs. So to do that, we can say that all the blobs are in index one and the white blob is in index two. But actually, let's first define the white blob by saying blob white, and the background color is white, and let's make sure that the Z index is two. Now this happens because the Z index for the white blob is above the glass. So to fix this, let's make the glass three instead of two. If we reload, you can see now this is moving like that. And actually for the white blob, I'm gonna make it smaller. So let's set the width to 400 instead of 800. And this looks even better. Now let's improve the colors a little bit more by adding another blob with the pink color. So let's define blob pink, and I'm gonna use this color. And let's go to the HTML and add it here. 
And now if you reload, you can see now it's a little bit nicer since we have a brighter color. And I also noticed that the blobs should be more blurry. So let's make them more by updating this to, for example, 140 pixels. Now I think that looks nicer. And that's it for this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section of this video. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.